Welcome. Thank you all for being here today, this morning. I'm really glad you're here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Hara, and today I'm going to be telling you about altruism and optimism. Before I get started, a big shout out to Professor Erica Wells, who's here today in the audience. She is my lovely advisor, and I'm so glad to have had her here because she was truly um, necessary for the, uh, this project. So let's get started. Um, why am I doing this project? About a year and a half ago, I came across this study called Neural and Cognitive Characteristics of Extraordinary Altruists, done by Abigail Marsh in 2014. She was looking at altruism in extreme altruists, so kidney donors, people who had decided that they were going to give one of their kidneys to a complete stranger. Um, and she was looking to see, do these people have differing brain structures? What is the mechanism behind this type of altruism? Um, <laughs> And while I was reading this, I was like, wow, these people are very positive. They're like, I don't, I don't need my second kidney. I'm good. Like, you can have it. Who thinks that way? Um, additionally, these people have such positivity towards others. It really makes you wonder, does this positivity and helping behavior for other people color other cognitive processes, such as optimism? So is there a correlation here? We thought so. I was thinking, hey, people who are more altruistic should also be more optimistic. Let's find out. A little bit of background for those of you who might not be so well situated with the two different cognitive processes as they are today. Um, altruism tends to be primarily genetic. So we are altruistic to people who are similar to ourselves, right? That makes sense evolutionarily. Gene polymorphisms have been found and linked to empathy and helping behaviors. Um, and also personality traits tend to be very similar for altruists across the board. So altruists score very low in neuroticism, but very highly on openness, conscientiousness, agreeableness. Um, they're all kind of traits that are similar and primarily genetic. Optimism, on the other hand, we don't really know. It's more of a mixed bag. So some people say, you know, optimism is learned. It depends on your environment, your family, friends, how you perceive things and how you choose to understand them. Um, but some studies have found that genetic factors play a really big role. Um, in any case, we don't know what the relationship between the two is like. It has not been determined before. So it's really interesting because we're doing new things, guys. <laughs> so what did I do? Um, we used Amazon MTurk. This is a crowdsourcing platform online. And we gave lots and lots of surveys to 130 people. And what are these surveys? The LOTR, this is the Life Orientation Test Revised. It measures optimism that is dispositional trade optimism. So not changeable, primarily fixed, primarily stable throughout one's lifetime. The LO, this is learned optimism. As the name implies, you know, it's more changeable, more malleable. It's kind of how you choose to perceive things, and it's learned. The APS, this is the altruism personality scale. Um, it's a good measure for altruism and helping behaviors. And then I wrote out six scenarios, which also correlate to altruism. And, you know, there was like a scenario multiple choice answers that correlated to different levels of altruistic behavior. Um, this survey took about 30 minutes and people were paid $2 for their participation, which I know sounds illegal, but it's not because the internet is a wonderful place. Um, and at the end of the study, 90% of our participants were given a 50 cent bonus for excellence in their responses. No, no, we just wanted to see if we could find an objective measure for altruism. Are people who are more altruistic, do they score higher? Um, on altruism, do they donate more money? Is that a thing we can measure? And they were able to donate their bonus to one of three charities, either Care USA, Doctors Without Borders USA, or the Brain and Behavior Research Foundation. So I did some statistics, seriously, lots of statistics. <laughs> it was lots of fun, I learned a lot, it was a good time. And here's what we found. So, the scenarios and the altruism personality scale Super significant and positive correlation, which is great because it means the scenarios I wrote actually measure for altruism. We're seeing here validity amongst the two and we can double check between the two of them. It's another double check, it's another measure for altruism. Great. And then here is the real crux of the issue. Um, the life orientation test revised, this is measuring for dispositional trait optimism, remember, has a strong correlation with altruism personality scale, and the scenarios. This is great, but what is bizarre is that they're both negative correlations. That's not what we were expecting. What this is telling us here 
is that people who are scoring lower in uh, altruism are sc mm, scoring lower in optimism are scoring higher in altruism. So pessimists are somewhat more altruistic. Is that it? Just more optimistic, less helpful? Kind of. What I didn't tell you before is that the life orientation test is meant to function on a bi-dimensional model. So most people, when they're thinking about optimism and pessimism, they're like, you're either optimistic or you're pessimistic or somewhere in between. This is a unidimensional model. The consensus now in the field is essentially that optimism and pessimism are bi-dimensional. So you might be really optimistic about your academics or your friendships, but really pessimistic about your love life. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, we said we should look at this on a bi-dimensional model. The nice thing about the life orientation test revise is that you can look at only optimism or only pessimism and look at the bi-dimensionality. So this is what I did. And interestingly enough, we see that pessimism is correlating really well negatively. This is again what we were seeing the first time, or positively, um, and then um, optimism negatively. So ironically enough, this does fit a unidimensional model better, meaning that altruism perhaps is um, a better fit with a unidimensional model, which is interesting because we are expecting bidimensionality. And now I know you're all wondering what happened to those donations chins hurrah. Did the donation show us anything? Unfortunately, the correlations were not significant. So we decided to do some fancy stats and we did a median split. With a median split, essentially you take whatever is above the median, that's considered a high value. Whatever is below the median is a low value. So we did the median split for the life orientation test revised. Um, people who scored above the median were high optimism. People who scored below are low optimism. And then we plotted this on a two-way ANOVA, which is the graph over there, against the altruism personality scale to see if we could predict donation behavior, whether or not people donated, not the amount. <coughs> so if I can bring your attention to the graph, as you see individuals who are on the high side of the life orientation test revised, their altruism is not a great indicator for whether or not they will donate. But look at the low optimism. If they're scoring higher on altruism, we're seeing there's a greater chance that they are donating. So interestingly enough, for pessimists, people low in optimism, their altruism is a good indicator for whether or not they will donate. Um, star star here, right? This is not significant. Unfortunately, we only had around 41 individuals who did donate of our total participants. So the numbers are really low. This isn't significant. But we did some effect size statistics. This has a medium effect. If this is run again with more people, it's possible that we could reach significance. Um, and at the end of the day, does this make sense, guys? I like to think so. Um, we think that this is due to the just world hypothesis. This hypothesis says that pretty much people think the world is fair. Uh, people get what they deserve, maybe like karma. Optimists, they're, they got this rosy look of the view of the world, and um, they might perceive the world as more fair. They do not see the need for help, and thus they will not help, right? So they, were be, they would be inherently less altruistic. Pessimists, not the case. They might see where there is need, where there is help necessary. So in the future, it'd be great to run optimism tests alongside um, just world questions and see if that's something that is real. This is just another hypothesis, right, cyclical. And um, that's all I have for you today. So if you have any questions, I'd love to help out. Um, of the hypothetical scenarios I wrote, or the altruism personality scale? Um, of the hypothetical. Sure. So the situations we wrote, there were six of them, um, and they tended to be fairly like realistic scenarios, <coughs> something that ideally would happen in real life. So one of them was, you know, you're walking down the street and you see a little like booth that's trying to raise money for children with a disease. Um, it's implied that it's cancer, but we don't say that. So some type of disease. Um, what do you do? And the options were like, you just walk past it sorry, on my way, you give them loose change, you donate like five or ten dollars, or you sign up to donate like monthly. So these would correlate to a different level of altruism, each um, option. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.